Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by TheVirtualInstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, the greatest live broadcast in all of YouTube. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody from wherever you are across the entire globe. Thank you guys for joining us this evening. If you're new to Getting Sketchy, what we do here is either myself or my good friend and fellow artist and art teacher Ashley Hurst tries to create a drawing for you inside of 45 minutes. And we do these Getting Sketchy broadcasts and series and or I should say seasons, maybe right. it's a more technical term. Anyway, um, we are at the the end of this season there. I have a drawing and Ashley has a drawing left. That's and right. Then we have a review show. So this will be the last drawing that I do for in, this season. Until next season. And uh, we have been choosing motifs, which are themes. And uh, my theme this season has been facial features. So tonight I've really got a uh, visual arts workout ahead of me <laughs> because I'm going to be drawing a portrait. And I'm really nervous and scared about it because I don't think I'm going to get this one finished. But that's for me to worry about. In the meantime, Ashley, how are you doing over there? I'm doing really great. Thanks for asking, Matt. I hope you guys are doing well out there also. Yeah, Matt's right. You guys are tuning in from all over the United States and all over the globe. I've just been checking out the chat, seeing where everybody's at. So we may call out some locations here um, shortly. And uh, But in any case, um, I drew a horse last, last week. That was the fourth drawing in my motif. My motif is down on the farm. So um, I'm almost done. I drew, I've drawn three animals and a tractor. So I'm trying to think of something pretty different from those um, for next week. Some sort of surprise. We'll see. But um, I was surprised at uh, the image that Matt chose tonight. I've seen it before. It's an excellent photograph. Um, mm -hmm. But he's going to be putting it all together, all of the features together. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of contrast tonight, so it's going to be a pretty exciting 45 minutes. I'm, I'm laughing because there's so many there's so many details in here. There's no way I'm going to get all so the details. It is so textured and so detailed. <laughs> yeah, there's, so. there's no way I'm going to get all the details. But, you know, we're talking about this photo reference, and you'll see it in just a minute when we switch over to the main camera. But if you want to have a look at the photo reference on your own, it is on the community tab on the YouTube channel. So right now you're watching this video. That doesn't necessarily mean you're on the YouTube channel. If you click on the little icon of my face down underneath this video, that will take you to the YouTube channel. And then if you look for the community tab, that's where you can find the photo reference. But if you're gonna be following along with uh, the, tonight's broadcast, then you probably don't need that right now because I'm gonna have the, uh, the image up next to the drawing. And as we've already discussed, since this is live on YouTube, there is a chat box. You can, of course, post questions and ask, or you can post comments and ask questions. And uh, they can be anything art related. They don't have to be about what we're talking about tonight. And Ashley's made in the chat box tonight, so uh, if you put your comment or question in all capital letters, if it's directed at myself or Ashley, that'll help us see us see it amongst all the other comments and questions that flow really, really quickly, sometimes here on YouTube. Also, if you're new to the channel or if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and subscribe. Click on that subscribe button and also click on the notification bell so you're notified when we do live broadcasts like this and when new videos are posted on YouTube as well. And if you want to go a lot deeper with your drawing and painting skills, which I highly recommend, I would encourage you to check out the program over at thevirtualinstructor.com, which is my website. Uh, there is a ton of courses. I just released a brand new course earlier this week on drawing with colored pencils on polyester film, which is drafting film. Um, but there are, there are courses on pen and ink, graphite drawing, realistic pencil drawing, colored mm -hmm. pencils, acrylics, oils, pastels, Combining watercolor and pen and ink, watercolor, there's so much to explore over there. There's a link in the description below if you want to check out our program. Everyone starts out for a uh, seven-day trial for free, and we have monthly and yearly plans, and uh, it really is a great program. But there's also weekly live lessons, which are more in-depth than what we do here on Getting Sketchy. After this broadcast, I will be continuing my live lesson series on acrylic painting over at thevirtualinstructor.com. There are weekly critiques, which are part of the Members Minute and a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers as well. So uh, again, there's a link in the description below if you want to go check out our program. If you want to just check out three of our course videos and eBooks for free, there's a link to do that below as well in the description. And that will actually, if you sign up for that, that will actually put you on our newsletter list. Hmm. So uh, I send out a newsletter every month with the new lessons that have been posted. So uh, that will get you on that newsletter list and also give you three free course videos and ebooks for free. Uh, what else? 
Um, I, I think you got it all in. Yeah, I think you got it all in. I've, I've just been reading the chats over here. Um, yeah. Deborah says, I love colored pencils on drafting film. And Will Smith joins us tonight, says, uh, time to slap that pencil in my hand. <laughs> you know, so, I, was, I was thinking about making a joke uh, about uh, G.I. Jane 2. Okay. But I won't. I don't think you, I don't know. Are you talking about my hair? Pow! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my goodness! Will, Will, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, slap that pencil in your hand. Yeah, I got my pencil. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to follow along. Mine's for taking notes, but we all need pencils in our hands. And you know, Will, Will Smith, you might have just read this. Time to slap that pencil into my hand. So I guess we're going to be hearing Will Smith jokes <laughs> I guess, all night tonight. I guess uh, so. I guess so. Boy, that was really shocking, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I mean, I, I, I don't watch the Oscars. I haven't watched yeah, them in years. I'm part either. of the reason that the viewership has been going down for the last 10 years. Well, well, well why do these people give themselves And so when I heard about know? it, I thought, is that true? You yeah. know, it's hard for me to believe things from um, from actors. Not that right. I don't trust actors, but they're so good at acting right. that I right. always question. Us right. Their, their and acting and publicity skills. stunts are a thing. I mean, do you remember when, um, um, well, what? Was it uh, Joaquin Phoenix was a rapper for a whole oh, year? Oh, I remember that. And that was a total publicity he, stunt. He had a whole like documentary. Yeah. That came oh, out. he he milked that for a whole year. Yeah. It was all fake. So sometimes I wonder. Yeah. You know. I don't think the Will Smith thing was fake though. I think it was real. I wish it and was. I, I I wish it was <laughs> fake too because I'm real disappointed. I that, like that. I, that I like. Will Smith and I like Chris Rock and now I like Chris Rock better. Yeah, so, I definitely like Chris Rock a lot. I don't want to better. say about that. The yeah. first album I ever bought was Parents Just Don't Understand by Will Smith. <laughs> so I was a fan West when I was eleven. That's yeah. right. So that was really disappointing to see. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well. Let's get to the drawing tonight. Yeah, let's get to the and, drawing. And uh draw this dude here. So we'll go ahead and switch over. And I'll say hello to you guys from Ohio, Arizona, Canada, Mexico, Indiana, Norway, Pennsylvania, Vancouver, Texas, New York City, Italy, Germany, Wales, Scotland, Central New York State, North Carolina, and Australia, and many more places. Those are the wow. ones that I was able to, All to record. All over the world, and a lot of those people are in our time zone. That's right. Time. There's a lot in our time zone. <laughs> For those of you who are... Uh, who are a half a day ahead of us. Thanks for being here. All right, real quick. Uh, I've been using the same materials this entire uh, this entire season because all of my drawings are kind of, you know, they're, they're similar. I'm drawing an eye, I'm drawing a nose, I'm drawing a mouth, ear, and tonight we're going to put it all together. So I'm sticking with the same uh, medium here. I'm using these Mars Lumograph Black Pencils by Stiedler. And these pencils, if, I, if I'm saying this correctly, are partly carbon and partly graphite. And what mm. I've noticed is the darker pencils seem to be more heavily concentrated with the carbon. So the feel of the pencil is not quite like a graphite pencil. It's a little bit more similar to a colored pencil, believe it or not. Um, it's somewhere in between a colored pencil and a graphite pencil. It's really interesting. Um, but I'm using this in conjunction with white charcoal and since I'm working on gray paper, this is gonna give me the ability to both push dark values and light values. Because if I was just using dark material on this gray paper, then the gray of the paper would be the lightest value that I can achieve. And obviously, looking at the reference, you can see mm -hmm. I've got some light values I've got to tackle in there. I also have a, a few blending tortillas and blending stumps and things like that uh, that I'll be using here as well. Um, you don't have to use the same materials that I'm using if you're drawing along. You can use whatever you want, of course, uh, but I do like this combination of, of material a whole lot. Uh, I think it's great for sketching and drawing kind of stuff we're doing here. Now, uh, there, are there are devices, and I like to call methods devices because it sounds more technical, but there are mm -hmm. devices that you can use to help you find the locations of facial features on a person's head. Um, the most popular is probably the Loomis method, if some of you have heard of that. It was uh, engineered by uh, an illustrator named Andrew Loomis. And it is a great technique when you are making up a face, meaning that you are developing a face from scratch. You can also kind of use it when you're, when you're looking at a subject. You can use it to make comparisons to a certain degree. Um, but if you're not careful, you may end up just making all your faces look like they're Loomis faces. Um, and sometimes you can kind of tell that the artist used the Loomis method um, if you're not careful. So I'm not going to be using any of those methods here. I'm going to be drawing 
uh, basically from observation. But you might notice a very faint cross in the middle of my paper, and I have sectioned this off to be halfway. And I've also taken my reference, and I've also sectioned it off to be halfway. And I've, I've got some markings to indicate where facial features end and begin. And that's kind of how I'm going to be working. Um, uh, so I'm going to be using this kind of very simplified grid to help me place the facial features. And then from there, I'm going to very hurriedly fill in the shapes of value. <laughs> um, so that's the plan. There are lots of details in here. There are little whiskers and things, uh, little tiny white marks. <clears throat> I'm obviously not going to be able to get all of that level of detail in a loose sketch inside of 45 minutes. Uh, so I'm just going to be focusing on mainly the lights and the darks and trying to get the structure of the face in place. And hopefully we'll have some eyes and a nose and a mouth in there as well. So that's the plan. And I'm going to be using the pencils I already mentioned, but the exact pencils. I've got an HB, I've got a 2B, a 6B, and an 8B. Um, I probably won't use all of these pencils, but I'm going to definitely start with the HB pencil and start laying things out. So... Are we ready? Do we, do we have yeah, any questions Yeah, well, we've got some first? comments and questions. Um, Deborah says, uh, thank you for your videos. I managed to draw something I'm quite proud of for the first time. That's the best kind of comment that we yeah, can awesome. get. Awesome I love it when yeah. um, you guys or one of my students in the classroom tell me they've made their best drawing ever. Then I mm -hmm. sleep well that night. Um, yeah. Buddy says, I love these pencils. Great, great advice, Matt. Um, and Michelle says... I have a book by Andrew Loomis from the 1930s. I didn't realize this method was so old. She yes. says my grandmother gave it to me. Yep, yep. Um, Deborah also says the guy in the reference kind of looks like the Doom guy. Maybe. Did he wear a mask? Haven't we all been wearing masks? <laughs> I can't. I'm not sure. who. Did, the I, Doom guy? D Doom. From the Doom? Doom? Doesn't he have like a metal face with a green hood? The video game? Doom? I, I think, I'm, thinking of, I'm thinking of Dr. Doom. Yeah, I, I don't doctor. know. I have no idea. I'm not even I sure am, who I'm I, thinking of. You know, I live. Under I've been a rock. sick. I've had. I've been taking medicine for a Dude, week. I actually got my cold. Yeah, Matt was sick last week, and I have been totally laid out since then. I mean, I had two good days, and then I got sick. <laughs> And so it's me this time. He's so, made me feel good, though, and he said it's probably he didn't get it from me, but you never know. You if never you were know. around last week, I was in rough shape last yeah, week. Yeah, he was. Um, Matt was a real was really hanging in there. So this week, thank goodness, I don't have to do the drawing because I don't know if I've got the energy <laughs> level to do the drawing this week. So I, real, I realize how difficult a task Matt had um, last week during the live lesson. Uh, well, yeah, it, if you could have seen the things off camera during the, during the live lesson, when, when I was painting, yeah. it was just... It was rough. It was a... Wish we had, I wish here. we had a special camera now, just I, on your face. Before we turn on the timer, I got to tell you, because <laughs> you guys, this is going to be gross, but you'll get a kick out of this. You uh -huh. know, I was doing acrylic painting, so I had several paper towels over here, and then I had a rag for cleaning my brushes. Right. Okay? Right. So, and I was using the paper towels to wipe my nose <laughs> and also to clean my brushes. And at some point, I got things confused. You forgot it, which is which. I forgot which was which. <laughs> and it ended up, I had like five, five paper towels, and I ended up using them all for cleaning the paint and <laughs> all for wiping my nose. <laughs> and they all, it was just all intertwined. Yeah. You um, had some medium was, in your paint there. It was some bio, bio medium, I guess. So yeah. I'm not touching that painting. <laughs> I, I've put, <laughs> my bodily fluids are in that painting over Ooh. there. <laughs> <laughs> And we're going to put it up for auction. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, okay. Right. It's from Dune, Dune, the movie. So, okay, well, great. So right, this is Dune, the video game, somebody's saying. Okay. I don't know. I Dune. Don't know. All right, it's not Mel Gibson. I'm still confused. Yeah, it's not Mel Gibson. Um, anyway, this image came from Pixabay. Frankenstein's uh, so. mother. I don't think, I, I, God, I hope this isn't Frankenstein's mother. <laughs> Or All right, Frankenstein. <laughs> All right let's, let's get, start drawing. Let's get started here because uh, we're running out of time here. I'm going to start the timer at 45 minutes. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where my eyes are. So, again, I am kind of using a... Um, I'm, I'm using these lines, and I know that his eyes line up right across the middle. And that would be the mm -hmm. edge of the face right here and the edge of the ear. So I'm trying to find... Basically trying to find uh, landmarks to start this drawing. And now his eyes aren't directly in the center of this lawn. There's a little off center. So that's the inside part of the left eye. 
And there we go. There's the edge of the face and the edge of the ear. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and figure out where I wanna place the nose. So well, actually, let's figure out where the bottom of the chin is located. So Matt is making landmarks, yeah, almost making... like dots, like connect the dots type books or coloring books. Um, he's just making his own dots for where the features start and stop. Now the nose should be in between the bottom of the chin and the eye line, but on this guy, the nose is actually a little bit higher up. On an average person, yeah. We yeah. were talking before the show, and I was um, telling Matt, you know, we were talking about how this person differs from the Loomis, I guess the Loomis face. And uh, my students sometimes ask me the same kind of things. We'll be, I'll be showing them that method. And, and they wonder why everybody doesn't look exactly the same. And I told them almost nobody's face actually fits into that formula. But the formula gives us a baseline to compare um, actual faces to. And how those faces deviate are what makes us look like uh, un unique to one another. So it's great to learn these methods and then see where uh, we have a difference. And Matt pointed one out, this guy's nose is not, you know, the bottom of his nose isn't directly between his eyes and his chin. That's how he differs, and that's why he doesn't look, you know, like a different person. He looks like himself. Okay, so just real quick, as far as the landmarks go, this is the top of the hair. This is going to be where the hairline meets the, the forehead. This is the brow line. This is the shape of the left eye. This is the, where the width of the right eye. This is the edge of the face, edge of the face, edge of the ear, edge of the ear, nose, mouth, and bottom of the chin. Okay? So I'm going to use these landmarks to basically find the structure of the head. Um, and again, this is, this is all due to using this modified grid here. And, uh, of course... You, there are a million different ways to draw a face and a million different ways to draw anything, really. Matt, did you ever draw or check your portraits upside down? Would you turn them upside down to compare to your reference? Have you used that trick? No, but you can do that. I do that. Sure. I'm, I'm one of those people. Um, when I, I will turn my reference and my portrait, or sometimes just the portrait, upside down. And little mistakes um, are exaggerated. They seem big when you turn your artwork upside down. By taking it out of context, for whatever reason, our eyes notice those mistakes. Also, um, looking at your artwork in a mirror, especially portraits, yeah. is a great way to check for small mistakes. So That can also, uh, let's see, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That can also bring to, to light compositional issues as well. Oh, really? Yeah, when you look at stuff in a mirror. Okay, I'll try um, that, because I usually only use the mirror trick with portraits. And, you know, I've heard this before, and I think that this is also another good thing to do. When you're checking to see if your composition works, um, taking it and looking at it upside down, you know, rotating your canvas or rotating your paper and yeah. looking at it. And if it works visually with the visual elements that are there, then you probably have a pretty strong composition. Hmm. June asks, did I miss how large your rectangle is? I believe it's yeah, four I by five. Yeah, I didn't it's very small. It's, well, uh, it's much larger than the other drawings that I've done this season, <laughs> but uh, this is four inches by five inches. Okay. So, um, that's where we're at with that. Okay, so I've got a, kind of a loose idea of the bottom part of the chin here. Um, and let's go ahead and put a little bit of an indication of the ear over here. Now the ear, the edge at the top of the ear does line up with the brow line. So I've got this brow line over here so I can have a pretty good indication of where the ear is, where the top of the ear is located. And same thing over here. Let's find the bottom of the ear which lines up with the, with the bottom of the nose. So we can bring this down a little bit. So this is the nose line. This is the bottom of the nose. Mm -hmm. And this is Just the mouth. So we'll come straight across here. And then we can find the bottom of the ear. Yeah, with the portrait, you know, once I get some sort of measurement that I know I don't want to change, I try to compare everything to that measurement for a while. Yeah, so this is, this is just, uh, I'm just building things out based on those initial landmarks. Just trying to get some of the contours in place. So we've got a, I've got my eraser here too, which these pencils erase pretty well as long as you're using a lighter pencil. Like if this was a 
8B that I was making these marks with. Forget about it. All right. Um, let's go ahead and put an indication over here in this ear for where we might have some highlights. And let's go ahead and start working in here. So we've got one eye right here. And a lot of the, the details in here are kind of masked because of shapes of value. So mm -hmm. I was just looking at all the shapes in there. I think I would yeah. focus on that in this kind of uh, artwork, especially in our time limit, those shapes. You know, the forehead's nice. It's really broken into sort of three values. It's got the dark and the light sides, and then a nice sort of medium-valued um, triangle right in the middle. We can, it almost looks like a value scale across that forehead, light, medium, and dark. Those are pretty distinct shapes. And the bottom of his... There's a little bit of white space underneath the eyes here, so I'm going to leave that open for now. And I don't really have a lot of time to fuss around with things here. So I'm not going to be fussing too much. Trying to keep my pencil moving the whole time. Mm -hmm. Not really stop and get too stiff. All right, now I see that there is a an edge right here going down the nose. An edge of that shadow. Of value. And then the bottom part just kind of curves around a little bit. Lines up with the line that I've drawn here. Do you think this guy's wearing a turtleneck? Oh, definitely. He's Black a turtle turtleneck. So I, don't, I don't know if he is or not. So that we, to make sure the light's not on his neck, I'll bet the photographer put him in a turtleneck. <laughs> I love how the background bleeds into the dark side of the face. Yeah, that's another challenge here. Yeah. <laughs> is the amount of black on the paper. There is a lot of black. This is a prime is candidate for black this paper drawing. Totally. But I can't deviate from no, what I've been doing. You've, so. you've been working with this same paper. Which is a little unusual. It's the first time you've done that in a season, right? Stick with the same Stick medium the same all medium. the way through. Yeah. yeah, same medium and surface combination. Uh, all right, so going up the forehead here, let's go ahead and get the hairline in place. So the hair actually comes out almost to the edge of the nose or the edge of the ear. And this guy, his hair is expertly sculpted. <laughs> yeah, sure is. You got you to pay a high price for hair like that. I would say that there's some hair gel in there. Alana joins us. She says, oh, God, I was heading to bed when I saw the notification. It's 1251. What did I miss? Well, you Matt, is, much, Matt yeah. is wrapping up his, um, his motif by putting all the facial features together in a portrait tonight. So it's the big finale for, for Matt's uh, motif. So we're glad you made it, Alana. All right. Let's go ahead and get some hair line going on here. And there's a secondary light source coming from the left and of course that is producing the highlight over there there is a slight tension in the room as everyone is watching matt's pencil lines with bated breath that was a comment <laughs> nice comment i like that dramatic christine riley says what is the best mechanical pencil and what is the best lead holder um, let's see, Matt, you and I use the same lead holder, don't we? Who makes those? Is that a, is it Steedler who makes those blue lead holders that we both use? I think I would need to make the head a little bit higher. Uh, yeah, you're right. There's almost, it's, it's really tight up there. I think it's Steedler. I think that's who makes those blue lead holders that have a nice, strong, um, uh, like, three-pronged grip at the end for the two millimeter lead as far as the mechanical yeah, pencil yeah. i'm not really sure about mechanical pencils um, i do use them occasionally but i mostly just stick with the lead holders and if i need a really you know a, a, a really fine um, mechanical pencil i'm not too fussy i just grab a like a 0.5 or whatever and uh and make my initial lines usually that's for some sort of perspective drawing so we're going to bring the hairline up just a little bit. Mm. 
A little bit higher. The face is looking a little compact. Now, Matt, we had a question a earlier yep. um, that I remember, but it's scrolled off the screen. But it was about the uh, drafting film. Yeah, you're doing it. You did a colored pencil course on the drafting film. Is that right? Mm-hmm. What do you know the millimeter of the drafting film? I mean, uh, uh, not off the top of my head. Okay, there was some questions about that. Okay, it was a pretty. Um, Pretty robust drafting film, though, right? Oh, yeah. It wasn't too thin, was it? No, it's not too thin, but it's it's not very thick either. Yeah. So <clears throat> I wish I could remember off the top of my head, but I don't. I can't. Okay. Well, you've got another top of the head to worry about right now, so. Yeah. All right, so here we go. Let's start adding some shapes of darker value here and... Uh, Hopefully the form of our face will start to make a little bit more sense as we do so. So there's going to be adding a lot of material here. I'm going to work tentatively at first. And I'm just going to kind of get an idea of where the shapes of dark value should be. So it looks like the common sizes are 0 0.003 through 0 0.005. So you might try the 0 0.005s as being a robust film. Of the drafting yeah. film? Well, the brand I used is called Duralar. Yeah. So um, That's right. That was part of the comment that scrolled off the screen. Yeah, so, it's sorry Duralar. That. And all that's covered in the course, of course. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this shadow comes down. I'm looking at the edge of the eye here. And it comes right across the top of the brow line. I'm still doing all of this with the HB pencil. And I'm just getting an idea of where these darker values are going to be before I start making them darker. And, of course, I'm going to be adding lighter values. Buddy's helping us with too. the pronunciation of Stedler. So it's more like feather or gather or bear. Stedler. I hope that's better, buddy. Well, there's all kinds of things that we could use help with pronouncing them, too, especially <laughs> me. I, believe it or not, I used to announce football games. I used and, to announce soccer games. And, okay, I did that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Probably At the same place in, you did. Yeah, so. yeah, I probably <laughs> roped in by the same person. Uh, yep. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, Alana says, Matt, it's so interesting how much younger your drawing looks without the wrinkles. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is his son here. This is what people pay for when they want portraits. They want those wrinkles <laughs> softened. This is what they pay well, for. Well, I, I also think that I've made the face a little too wide too so that would be something that i would change i'm kind of actually trying to alter it a little bit you know it, i was wondering about that because yeah. I, I thought it was a little wide but also without value it can feel wide right so i was on the fence about whether it's too wide or it's just flat no which i think makes it's it feel i think wide. it's too wide okay. um but in the amount of time that i have i, I there's limited things that i can do to change it so i'm going to kind of have to just go with it uh to a certain extent, because you could, I mean, honestly, you could sit here and fiddle with, with a portrait for a long time. <laughs> in for fact, days. that's usually what happens. <laughs> so um, the fact that I'm trying to do this inside of 45 minutes is a little bit crazy, but it is what it is. Dancing Nana asks, have you worked on both sides of the Dorlar? Uh, both sides? The, both sides are very similar. Okay. I don't see a difference to the paper on both okay. sides. Um, Dancing Nana. I love that name. I, I had a Nana, and she loved to dance. So I even have video to prove it. All right. So this shadow shape might be a little bit too large. Not real sure yet. We'll find out. We'll get, start getting some lips in here. We have an interesting comment from 
um, Rosara Malak, I may have mispronounced your handle, your name. It says, uh, also, any tips on understanding value when looking at an object without making a monotone photo reference? Definitely. I, I, this, is a, this is something that we do in the classroom a lot because many of us um, start out with misconceptions about what a value is when we look at a, vi a color, especially intense color. Um, one thing that color can do sometimes is, is create the feeling of light. You know, um, I used to have a professor that would say that all the time. Color creates light. And so he suggested you don't always have to add white to things to make things look lighter. Just make it more colorful and people will think it's lighter when in fact it's not. So the tip here is that many bright colors like red are darker gray than um, when changed to a gray than they seem to be when they're in color. A lot of colors are actually darker than they seem. Also, and I, you know, I have a better tip coming, yellow often is misinterpreted as being darker than it really is. So the tip is to look at something that's in color, and this will train your brain to see the value through the color. That's how I like to say it. So take something that's a color, just a swatch. You know, just take a, a swatch of color from a magazine or a, a piece of blue um, mitant paper or something like that and try to mix a gray that you feel like matches that color. Don't mix a color, mix a gray with paint. You know, you need to do it with black and white paint, not with your pencil on, on paper. I guess you could, but it would be better if you do it with paint because you can adjust it back and forth more easily. Then when you think you've nailed it, when you think you have the gray that that color swatch would be, then take a picture of both of them and change it to monotone filter. And when you change, the, and you'll get immediate feedback um, to your exercise and be able to see if you interpreted a color as being lighter than it is or darker than it is, or if you've begun to see the true value through the color. And we do that in the classroom. Um, we started doing that years ago before we even had cell phones in our pockets, and we would use a document camera, and my students would, would mix a gray um, to match a color that I'd given them and then bring it to the front of the room, and we'd put it under our document camera, change to grayscale, and the whole class could see it, and we would look at it on the screen and see how well we did. So um, it's a great exercise. Okay, so now I have got a little indication of the lips in place. There's darker values underneath. And that's what's going to make them look like they protrude. And we get a little bit more uh, of an idea of where some of these darker tones are before I start adding some of the white charcoal. And then we'll start pushing the value range. And I am going as fast as I can, guys. <laughs> well, you're, really you're still on the, you know, on the front end of our 45 minutes, so you're doing, you're doing well. Well, <laughs> I've got a long way to go. Uh, there's well, a Will lot. Smith says... You slap that together real nice. Keep uh, up the good work. I look forward to the next thanks, one. Thanks, Will. Well, we're still going. Boy, still got somebody made job. them a YouTube <laughs> account in the Just last in time. couple of days. Yep. All right, let's see. Um, and how was Will Smith available? I'm so, I was surprised by that myself. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's pretty good. Uh, maybe it is it's Will Smith. It's in all caps. So maybe, maybe it really maybe, is Will Smith. Maybe caps count. Maybe so. Um, I see Colleen has a comment, in, um, and uh, Colleen, your comment is in, is in regular type. If you put it in all caps, I'll be more likely to see it, and that's for everybody, just a reminder. Um, if you feel like I'm missing your comments, make sure they're in all caps, and I could still miss them because I make mistakes constantly. All right, so Colleen says, the timing of your colored pencils on drafting film was timely. Um, I had just ordered a pad. Got, got in uh, a pad and got the email. I watched the entire course today. Excellent videos on the subject, Matt. Thanks. And then uh, Celine follows up with, what exactly is drafting film? It's, it's a semi-translucent, well, it's translucent, uh, yeah. translucent paper that's heavy. Well, it's, I shouldn't say it's heavy. It's a very smooth surface, um, but it is very tough. And because of its yeah, it's toughness, very durable. it's not, it's not really a paper. It's, it's a, it's a film. It's 100% polyester. So yeah, It's like plastic paper. Yeah, plastic paper. That's a good way to describe it. And what's great about it or what's so unique about it is, you know, when we use colored pencils, erasing is something that's not really uh, a viable option <clears throat> with colored pencils. But with drafting film uh, or polyester film, you can erase. And that changes the way that we approach colored pencil drawing. Another 
interesting thing about this paper is you can use black very freely and not have to worry about it making things look too flat or unnatural because hmm. the paper itself kind of dulls the colors to a certain degree and uh, that mutes black a little bit and makes it appear more natural. So uh, for those of you who have been kind of turned off by colored pencil drawing because th it, they're difficult to erase and because black can look really unnatural and flat, mm -hmm. uh, if you didn't know that, now you do, um, then this surface might be something that you're interested in. And the, the course is kind of a mini course because in most of the courses, I do several demonstrations with several different subject matter. In this course, we just do one drawing uh, after looking at the materials, but the drawing is pretty in depth. I mean, it's a, a very, uh, I think the drawing took me close to 20 hours to complete. Uh, but it really, th that one single drawing does give you a good idea of how the paper works mm -hmm. and the advantages that that paper has. So it's a little bit different than some of the other courses, but uh, something that I wanted to do and share with you guys because I was super excited when I discovered the paper. Well, Buddy says, Matt, this is getting great. Yeah, it's really developing quickly now. Now that you're getting uh, some, well, some yeah. values in there on the dark started, side. Got to get some of those uh, light values in there. And then there's a lot oh, of yeah. middle values too. And I haven't even gone dark yet. So, I mean, I'm... You're finding them though. You're I'm finding your shapes. finding them and I'm sketching them really fast here. <laughs> Yeah, this Let's is a do the, this uh, is a sprint. It is a sprint, boy. I'm going to be out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. I'm, I I feel I feel fatigued already. Alana says, Ashley, that sounds like a really helpful exercise, and that's in reference of uh, mixing paints to match colors with grays and trying that out. It is it is very helpful. I've gotten to do it every year. Um, for about almost two decades now, and uh, I think it has helped me for sure. Uh, I was really surprised the first time I tried to match the gray of a lemon yellow. Give that a go. All right. Um, Sashin, and I may have mispronounced your name, I apologize if I did, asks, thoughts on design education? Now, Matt, you went to a design school, right? Yeah. NC right. State yeah. is a design. Has a, so that's where I started. Really? Yeah, you started I there. I did not finish there. I transferred to Charlotte, which mm -hmm. was fantastic. Um, and um, that's because I, I, I went into illustration instead of graphic design, which was my original major and I'm so glad I did because you know I was one of those people that was told well you better go into if you're going to go into art you better go do something that's going to make you some money right you know um, and so it was you know people were pushing me into architecture which my wife was an architect and <laughs> there's not the money that you think that would be there <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and um, then the other option of course was graphic design so that's what I started with and, and realized that I just, you know, I wanted to be drawing and painting. I, I didn't want to be uh, at a computer all day, which ironically now I'm at a computer all day. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Um, but, Surrounded by computers now. Right. But you're also drawing. But I'm, I'm, I'm drawing, yeah. yeah I'm also you know, drawing with traditional yes, media. Yes, yes. I'm still getting, getting to do mm -hmm. uh, what, I, what I dream to do. So I had no complaints there. Just... Uh, so I could go forever in this ear here. I'm going to put a little bit of the pep. I, I keep talking about, oh, I can't wait to get the light values on there. I'm getting ready to do it. I'm getting ready. <laughs> Just trying, trying to get so much down as I possibly can, as much as I can. You know, when I was growing up and decided I wanted to uh, um, pursue art, I just went ahead and uh, went straight for fine art. That was what I was interested in from the very beginning, as opposed to some of the design careers out there. Um, in hindsight, and I, though, um, I, you, you guys know I love drawing objects, hard-edged, smooth objects with gradation. I've been outside of my comfort zone um, this, you know, in a good way. Um, I've been outside of my comfort zone by drawing more animals this season, the farm animals, and that's been a lot of fun for me. But um, I think I would have liked to have been possibly an industrial designer. And I like to think of the industrial designers as the Wizard of Oz of design, right? They kind of, they kind of make everything everybody uses. They're behind the curtain. You know, you really don't think about who designed that cheap school chair, you know, cheap plastic school chair, but there's millions of them and everyone knows what they look like. So I'm interested in, 
in industrial design nowadays. Um, I'm, I'm impressed by what, what those people do. So I might have been interested in pursuing that. Um, in another lifetime, I might do that. So what specifically are, is that person asking about design school? Just your thoughts. Oh, okay. Thoughts on, on design school. So I didn't actually go through a design program, so I don't have a lot of thoughts on them except for I used to see, I mean, I took, you know, I took the design classes I was required to take, and I did really love them. You know, we worked um, more on uh, uh, compositional design, relationships of colors, things like that. And I really did like them, um, but I uh, pretty much stuck to the, to the fine art side of my department. Now, I love design. Yeah. Um, and I'm super interested in it. Yeah, I mean, but... designers get to shape the near future. It's super, it's, the, the very idea is super cool. They're deciding what the world is going to look like soon and i use design mm -hmm. uh and and i mean i guess i'm somewhat of a designer well you design consider your website. web design <laughs> all the time yeah and know? um so. i do all the graphics and everything so uh, i guess i'm doing graphic design well we we've always <laughs> taught the elements and principles of art and design Right. You know, and so the uh, the language of art and the language of design is the same. It's really the same language, just maybe a different application or reason. And the reason has is very important in the different uh, design jobs out okay. there. Well, let's see how what time how much time do we have left? Oh, Seventeen minutes. Okay, um, I'm going to start adding some of the lighter values here, and then I'm going to start increasing the contrast. And uh, right now, I'm kind of going to lean on some of the grays of the paper to help me with some of the medium values uh, in case I don't get to them. But um, Matt, we have a quick question that's about to scroll off the screen about charcoal paper. Okay. And you remember the name of the, uh, of the tooth of charcoal paper, right? What is the name of that? It's a laid pattern. A laid pattern, uh -huh. right. So um, the best drawing, uh, the best paper suitable for charcoal drawing is charcoal paper with that laid pattern. It's kind of like um, horizontal, uh, not necessarily horizontal, depends on how you turn the page, but it's like lines. It looks like lines in the page. Yeah, it's many, linear. many lines that go in one direction and a few that go in the other direction. And um, it's very thin paper. Um, but it is meant it is meant for charcoal, so it comes in both black and white. If you if you like doing white charcoal on black, you can get the black version. So of course you can use charcoal on anything. It was originally used on rock walls and caves. So we can you know charcoal can be drawn on. You can use just regular drawing paper or me tints paper. But there is there is paper just for charcoal. Yeah, I love charcoal paper. Um, and I used charcoal paper for years for my graphite portraits. Oh, did you? Yeah. I have never used charcoal paper yeah. for anything except charcoal. Yeah, I used it for the graphite por portraits, uh, the house portraits, because they are so good at mimicking the texture of, uh, like, bushes and trees and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and when you're doing a house portrait, you know, that kind of stuff's pretty important. Hmm. So. Yeah, it's perfect for that application, I guess. All right, so now I'm adding some of the lighter tones here, and uh, hopefully that's going to push the range of value. It'll definitely push the range of value, but uh, it'll hopefully create a little bit more of that impression of form here. Mm -hmm. and it's going to make the, dark, the shadows that are there start feeling darker all by themselves. Yes, and then I'm going to go back and make the shadows darker. Um, and I am, I am uh, unlike the other drawings I've done where I've reached for the blending stomp, I am... Kind of uh, hoping that the, the gray of the paper is going to do some work for me here just because of the amount of time that I have. If I do yeah. have time to go back and do some blending, I will. But if I blend in one area, I'll probably have to blend everywhere. So, All right. The, we've got that. more questions about the drafting film, Matt. Um, Norlene asked which brand of drafting film is best and also a pad or a roll. Were you using a pad? I was using a pad, Okay, yeah. 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 You know, I don't like using anything off a roll because I have to work hard to unroll it except for unprimed um, canvas because you stretch that on stretcher bar. So I try to avoid buying rolls I, I in general. I don't think I would use a roll unless you are doing something really large that would require using mm -hmm. the roll. Uh, the Duralar paper is is really made for artists to use. I mean, there's lots of different types of people that use drafting film. Uh, obviously, 
at one time architects used it. <laughs> I don't know if they still do or not with everything, you know, being CAD drawing and stuff. Yeah. But, um, and industrial designers, as we've already talked about, industrial mm -hmm. designers, they like to use drafting film. Landscape architects, those kind of folks like to, to use that film. Um, so uh, there's lots of different uses for the film, and they make the film in lots of different sizes for the different types of people that use the film. But if you're using it in the capacity that I was using it in the course to create a drawing with colored pencils, then you, I don't see anything wrong with getting a pad. Uh, the paper is not cheap, but it wasn't inexpensive either. Well, that's interesting. Patsy has a comment um, right under Norlene's about um, different brands, and she says that graphics... Yeah, there's a graphics is, brand. She feels like a better brand than Duralar. I'm... I may... Oh, okay. A, a different brand. I may be wrong... Maybe... Maybe... She feels like sure Dior Lar is more like a student grade compared to the graphics brand. I don't know. I may I be wrong, mm -hmm. and somebody can look this up, but I'm, graphics might make Dior Lar. Oh, really? I'm not real sure. I don't know. Like a parent uh, company That might be or something, something to look up there. Interesting. Well, it, you know, if that's the case, then fine. But the, the Dior Lar paper uh, that I used, which is, it's, I think, the brand name, um, was fantastic. Uh, so if it was student grade, then that's fine. You know, some student grades, though, are their designated but it as does such, not, it's, are really You know, good, it's archival really paper. Right. I, I would still hesitate plastic. to call it student grade. <laughs> it's going to last a really um, long time. You know, that's kind of like saying, well, I like polychromos pencils. Prismacolor are really student grade. You know <laughs> what I mean? Um, yeah, I've, uh, I use Winton oil paints, and they're considered student grade, and I think they're really good oil paints. Well, the Duralar paper doesn't... It, it does not designate student grade right. or it being a lesser quality. You okay. know, we're all going to have brands that we like a little bit better than other brands, and that's fine. So, so there's lots of light values up here in the forehead, and uh, those light values help to accentuate the wrinkles up there. So I'm trying to... Oh, it looks like the graphics name is on the Doralar. Yeah, that's so, what I thought. So, so they're pretty... Well, it may be, they may be a little different, but they're... Probably made in the same factory. Well, I, I get the impression that the Duralar paper is made specifically for making art. Okay. And um, but you know it is it is what it is. You know you're getting some detail in the form in that. I mean I can feel the undulation of the of the forehead. It you know? doesn't take much. No. Nope. Three values is all you really need. Now there was a question that scrolled <laughs> off. It was about your pencil. Um, did you use just the HB pencil so, so far? So far, just the HB okay, pencil. Okay, that's what yeah. we thought. Uh, just I'm gonna so, go just back. the HB so far. I'm going to go back with the dark one in just a minute, and I am planning on darkening the area around this guy too, which is going to really bring things out. But I've only got 11 minutes, so I'm going as fast as I can here. All right. Um, Alana says, Matt, those highlights are everything. His nose jumped out of the page. Yeah, those. once you switch to that white charcoal, it really starts to take on, take on a little life of its own. That is true. Rose says, let's remember to like this video. That's a great comment. Oh, yeah. Good suggestion, Rose. Good, Good suggestion. Good. And uh, Sachin says, traditional art versus digital art. Well, I love them both and teach yeah. them both. And I'm doing more digital art as time goes on because the resources have become more readily available for my students just, just in the last, um, just recently. So I've been working more in programs Matt and I have both always used Photoshop for to support our art, you know, to support our traditional art, um, to manipulate references, to to add grids to imagery, um, things like that. And but, I think right now ahead. we're calling it digital art versus traditional art, but I think in just a few years' time, it's it's all art. I, yeah. I don't. I, I, like I think that. that we're still calling it traditional versus digital, but. I, I feel like it's kind of like the same thing when the camera came around, you know? Yeah. Um, where the, that when was... the camera first came around, our um, photographers were using it to mimic paintings. Yeah, and, it, and is, there were a lot of hilarious. there were a lot of painters who became photographers. Oh yeah, well they were still in the business of making pictures, I guess. You know, it's just making pictures. So that's how I. I mean, I'll go ahead and tell you. You know, 20 years ago, I was really angry about Corel Painter trying to make pixels look like brush strokes. I got all been out of shape for a couple of years about that. But uh, <laughs> then I started using those programs, 
and loved them. It was wild. I could pick it up and take it with me. I didn't have any water cups to clean up or anything like that. I could share it with people um, very, you know, very uh, uh, easily as well. So um, I like, I like, I just like making pictures, and yeah. I don't, and I don't draw a distinction. I don't like to draw lines that separate people into camps. I do. I've always been that way with art and with craft. I don't look at craftspersons different than artists. And I like to, I want to bring the digital artists into our camp as well. We're creative people. We like to make stuff. And uh, the tools that we use are, are highly variable because even though we're all creative, uh, we're different. And we can find a, a way to make pictures that suits our temperament. So that's kind of where I'm at with the digital versus traditional. And nowadays, very different um, than how, from how I felt about it 20 years ago. All right, let's start getting dark. Here. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, just that just that dark spot over the eye, and they feel piercing. Yeah, this is this is a six B pencil, so I don't know if I'll get to the eight B or not. But, <laughs> Norlene uh, says I, that I went to the dark side. <laughs> yeah. um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something about oh, somebody. There's still a, a big misconception over what digital art is. And how much effort goes into it, and how much work is involved. Well, the computer because doesn't draw for you. Somebody, that's for sure. yeah. Well, some people still think that they do yeah. because somebody sent me an, uh, a message or something, and I get a lot of incohesive messages that just don't really make a Inco lot of sense. Incoherent. Incoherent. What did I say? Incohesive. Which well, they're inco incoherent. They're incohesive too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, um, and those kind of comments, I just don't respond to because you know if you can't take enough time to like write a sentence that makes sense the incoherent um, ones yeah. yeah anyway this person was kind of what i kind of interpreted it as is this person was like talking about digital art and saying well isn't it cheating because the program does everything for you boy and they still did no, not that's the get, camera <laughs> they still did not understand that yeah. the drawing that's created digitally still has to be Handmade. I think um, they may have been exposed to only something like Photoshop where you sort of drag out shapes and things like that. But digital art is so beyond that. We're, we're making marks on the tablet's surface with a stylus that's shaped just like a pencil. So it's, it's not, we're not dragging out shapes anymore. Um, you know, there's, there's mark making in there. And one way to define drawing is just is mar is in fact mark make. It's the contemporary way to define drawing is mark making, and you can make marks um, in a digital program. So it's still it's still drawing. In in a lot of ways, it's feeling more traditional all the time. In fact, um, I have a, I, the my my biggest problem with drawing on glass tablets is the slickness of the glass tablets but now you can get a film a clear film that goes over the tablets like ipads that is a paper feel and so even even on a glass screen you can get the friction of paper and uh, that's important it's always been important to me because i felt like i had less control on the glass surface than on on a drawing paper that has tooth to it so a little bit of now it will wear down the nibs of your apple pencils a little bit faster, um, but it, it can feel a little more like drawing on paper too. So I'm more open-minded about that than I used to be because the hardware is getting better. Okay, so at this point we're getting maybe a broader range of value and uh, getting a little bit more of a definition of form oh, here. Oh, yeah. yeah the, the value range is really starting to increase now. And the hard stuff is done. The... Mm -hmm. the uh, time-consuming stuff is, is left, and that is adding these dark tones, and let's see how much time we've got, five well, minutes. Well, you have a, I mean, you've got a lot of visual information in here in the 39 and a half minutes that you've been drawing. Well, thanks, but I still have to get the background to be black. Speaking of the background, uh, yeah. Danny asks, are backgrounds of portraits really necessary to apply? And the answer is, not always, um, but, but a lot of times. Well, in this particular case, the background is going to make the values, it's going to make the portrait make more sense. Especially because of the way his head emerges from the darkness. Right. So in this case, the background is a player. You know, it's, it's part of the subject here. Um, if you do a portrait that's pretty high key, 
maybe you've uh, kept the values from, from being um, too dark. Um, sometimes you can get away with leaving a, a white background, I think. Matt's working on a toned surface, so even if he, even if this was a different type of portrait where we could see the neck and we could see it go into the shoulders um, and the background didn't really envelop the subject like it does, um, then his background, I would say, isn't blank anyway because it's a tone that is, but you know, is in the middle or somewhere in the middle of the value range. It doesn't feel, even if he left it alone, it wouldn't feel blank in the same way um, white paper sometimes can. So right, that's a good let's question. See how quickly I can get this background covered. That's right. Just slap it down. Just slap it I'm together. I'm slapping it down, Will Smith. Slap it down like Chris Rock. That's awful. Well, Chris Rock's the one that got slapped. I down. know. I hate it for him. Yeah. I mean, if if uh, if Chris Rock got slapped for that, why didn't they take Ricky Gervais out in the parking lot and beat him to a pulp a couple years ago? I know. That's, he insulted that's the entire room over and over and over. That's what's problematic. I mean, right. we like to be funny people. You know, we're sure. we're kind of comedians. Not good ones. Not but, good ones. But, <laughs> I got jokes. We like to think we, we're kind of funny, you know? Um, my so, family sure doesn't think I'm funny. <laughs> oh, no, I'm with you there. I'm not either. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, you don't, you don't expect somebody to walk up and smack you when well, you're, you know, when you're and, saying jokes. And Will you know? Smith is a comedian, too. Uh, that's what's so that's kind what's of shocking so weird. about it's it. It's not yeah. like he's Van Diesel who doesn't crack a smile and never has or something, you know? Will Smith's done comedy, so, and it, it was good at it. Let's see if this 8B pencil goes a little bit faster. Uh, no, Wasn't there a movie the he was in where he like his face got like swelled up or something? He had like an allergic reaction. It was hilarious, you know. So he's done. He does comedy. He's he's been funny. Was that uh, that wasn't Men in Black? Was it? I mean, I don't. No, know. No, it wasn't Men in it. Black. Enrique asks, "Is the drawing same the same size as the photo?" Uh, Matt's probably yeah. looking at a drawing that is, uh, his drawing is smaller than the reference. That's Definitely. In front of him. It, yeah, it's proportional, meaning that um, the amount of space that I've set aside here is similar. Yeah. I mean, it's the same, it's proportionally the same. Right. The, the rectangle is the same kind of rectangle, you know, but um, the reference that Matt has in front of him is just a larger version of that rectangle. So he's shrinking it down a little bit in his drawing. Yeah, it's, it's shrunken down a lot. Actually. A lot of times in portraits, it's actually nice to go big. The smaller the portrait, the harder it is. Yeah, because that's... the details <laughs> are just even smaller than real life. So if you want your portraits to, to be dazzling, go, go Chuck Close style. Yeah, go go ahead and make it huge. Make a, make a head that's two feet tall, you know, or three feet tall. And you can use a, you can take, you can get your pencil in there and make the finest details because they've been blown up. Go then, large. then take a picture of it on your phone, and you'll be dazzled with all of the uh, all of the detail in there. So I like to go big, but not on getting sketchy. <laughs> no, can't go big here. Um, this is this. There's no way I would have finished this drawing if I went much much bigger. Mm -mm. And I mean, I've got what a minute now. Got a a, so. a slow minute to go. Oh, oh, am I going to make it? Oh, I've gone so fast. I've tried to go so fast. Um, Sachin says, by the way, where are you guys from? You may have picked up on our accents. We're from the southeast of the United States. Southeast slash mid-Atlantic in that area. All right. I wish I could get rid of all the little, well, I don't know. It kind of works here. Norlene says, the pressure of doing this detail in 45 minutes. Wow, Matt, great job. Oh, thanks. Thanks you do for... Have, you did age him. You went ahead and brought him up to, uh, to his uh, appropriate age. You got some wrinkles in there. Oh, yeah. It's, it's got to yeah. be, gotta be uh, yeah. like that. Um, but I also don't want to make his, I don't want his neck to look like it's floating there. So I'm going to have to... Yeah. Be a little careful with that here. A little indication. Yeah. 
there's a little bit of a you know these uh, these 45 minute drawings are um, a fantastic exercises you know if we didn't have a timer would you have thought would you ever try to go this fast on a whole portrait like this no way I, I would be still working on positioning the eyes right right <laughs> I know I know so these are great exercises if you don't do if you haven't been doing time drawings work them into your your warm-up routine and they don't have to be 45 minutes you can do five and ten minute time drawings um, just to push yourself just to see how much material you can get down in a short period of time I know the time's up but hopefully this won't count the little bit that I'm doing now Anthony says the background here is definitely important it made the drawing pop yeah it sure did we've been yeah. waiting for that background all hour um, Javi says, is this guy in the ref getting ready to lay this smack down or did he get slapped? He, he looks, I would say he's getting ready to lay. Yeah. Smack he down. looks he's pretty, very, he looks pretty upset. He looks pretty, he upset. looks like a, he doesn't look like a nice dude. I mean, no offense to the guy. <laughs> this is like a um, professional model somewhere. So he looks kind of like a, a little bit of a villain. He's got a villain, villainy look to him. The high contrast, I guess is yeah. what's doing it to him. And speaking oh. of high contrast, I could definitely go darker in some of these areas and you know push the contrast even further. But let's give it a little bit of movement to the hair here, just to make it a little bit more, a little more interesting. We're getting a lot of great comments on the drawing. Oh, great, great job, Matt. Thanks. That's from Hoot and Holler. Woo, Hoot and Holler. The background <laughs> made it pop from the. Argano, no, I think I said that wrong. I should have practiced. And Terry says, incredible job. Thank you, guys. Carlette says, this is, wow, 45 minutes? Yeah, there's smoke coming off my pencil here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess we'll let that be finished. All here. right. Clean up this edge a little bit. It's uh, hard to stop. It's hard to stop. Let's just you, keep going. Just keep going and yeah. keep going and keep going. Because there's, I could refine this drawing, obviously. I didn't do any blending or anything like that with this drawing, no, with, you've which I did with the time other ones. to get the uh, material down, right? Yeah. The last one you did, a, the last ones you've had a chance to do a lot of smudging in. Yeah, and, and working things out, getting smooth transitions and stuff. Oh, yeah. there is a little bit I can do right here inside this eye. Let me just make this eye a little bit. Even June stronger. says, Matt, it's incredible. Thank but he guys. says, wow, and then about 20 exclamation marks. Oh, wow. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Just to, just let me, just oblige me here for a second. And Stephen says, wish I could draw, could draw like that. Well, Stephen. Um, you, you can. You can, right. Let me teach you. It just takes a little bit of time. <laughs> and uh, and uh, actually, it takes a lot of time and, uh, and dedication. But you can. None of us were born able to draw. Drawing and it painting are disciplines, just experience. like any other discipline. Um, it's just like learning to play the guitar or something like that. You have to learn the concepts and learn the basic foundations and principles, and then after that, it's a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like a, you know playing an a musical instrument. People have an, an aptitude for it because they appreciate the exercise. They enjoy the process. Um, but... But nobody can read music when they're born. They have to learn the fundamentals. And there are fundamentals in art that are learnable. It's not just do whatever, you know. There, there are a set sort of sets of, uh, I hate to say rules, um, but they are the elements and principles of art. And learning them and learning to use them together is drawing and painting. Well, um, you know, and I don't think there would be any, you know, if, if this person robbed me, <laughs> and then I had to tell the police who did it, and I drew this picture. I think they might be able to find this Yeah, guy. I think so. No, that, um, that looks like him, especially for 45 minutes. I mean, I know yeah. you, you has had some things you said you would have changed proportionally, but I think it feels like the face thinned out some. Did well, yeah, I did thin it out. Thin it it out. I did thin okay. it out a little bit. I raised the hairline early. and um, <coughs> raised the hairline and then... Uh, skinning the face down just a little bit around the ears, but um, but anyway, so I'm I'm okay with this uh, drawing. Mm -hmm. I yeah, think I think you did great. Different. 
When I saw your subject, I thought, what have you done to yourself? I know. Because uh, I've drawn this person before, <laughs> and I know how difficult this, this uh, subject is. So um, let's see. We, um, uh, Michelle says, thank you for taking time to share your talents live. Thank you guys for spending some, that time with us. Alana says, is next week the last of the season? Next week is the last drawing of the season. Um, right. It's my fifth drawing. Then we're going to take a week off, I believe, yes. and return with a wrap-up show yes. where we look at our 10 drawings and critique them a little bit, talk about what went well, um, what didn't go well, or what, what we might would have done different, that kind of a thing. Which yes. Sometimes it's fun to go through the 10 drawings and give each of them um, just a few minutes of review. It's always fun to do that. So don't miss that show. Yeah. Uh, that'll be in a few weeks from now. Um, don't miss that one because it's really good to go back and see the artworks and, ha and hear us talk about what we would change and what we would do different. Even though these are quick sketches, uh, that means that there's more things to talk about, <laughs> things that we could change. There's always or stuff make we could better. do different yeah. or change, so there's um, plenty to talk about. So that will be the last show of this series, but that will not be next week. Next week, Ashley will be drawing. It will be uh, two weeks after that because we're going to have a week off, and then we're going to be off for a few weeks after that um, doing Getting Sketchy. I'll continue to post here on the YouTube channel, mm -hmm. but uh, and the live lessons will continue. Just uh, We'll take a break from Getting Sketchy for a little while because... Uh, it is it is um, nerve wracking to do this, and uh, it does does require um, a lot of extra work and, and some other things like that. We have to behind we, the we scenes. Do, we do ten drawings, guys... and then we go to therapy and we talk yeah. about it <laughs> right. until we're ready to do it again. Uh, but we'll be back for I guess it'll be season seven when we come back. Wow! Uh, all right. Um, Oh, I guess that's it. All right. Um, superb. Great work, Matt, says wow. Lynn. Thank you. Um, amazing results. Beautiful work. Have uh, Let's see. Uh, Celine says, have you already decided on your subject for next week, Ashley? No, I haven't. I'm, I'm leaning away from an animal because I've done a rooster, a, a sheep, and a horse. So I'm leaning towards um, something else farm-related. Um, besides uh, wildlife, besides an animal. And I've done a tractor. I like tools. I love to draw actual tools. I like to draw art supplies. I like to draw hammers. So I might look for something tool-related or maybe produce-related. I mean, you know, farms... Oh, yeah, you I'm drawing a lot of animals, and farms give us everything we eat, not just the animals. So we may do something with produce. We'll see. Um, I, I'm seeing now that I'm looking at the, the feed and seeing the drawing next to the, the reference... I'm seeing that there's a, a, a kind of a middle gray value. That's, right the, here in a that's the one I was talking about. Yeah. The, the forehead looks like a value scale to me. You yeah, got light and yeah, then medium yeah, and then dark. Uh, yeah. There's some little changes in those values, but. Yeah, you right. Know, you have to ignore this, the changes. Yeah, it's kind but of a there's simplified like triangle. There's an upside down there. triangle of gray next to a right side up triangle of light. Yeah. So awesome. Oh, I could have made these values so much. Well, started. Michelle yeah. votes for drawing vegetables or plants, so that's still that's possibility, very much a possibility. All right, well, uh, we need to get ready for our next show, so uh, let's go ahead and switch out over here. Whew, that was that was quite uh, <laughs> quite a harrowing experience there. Um, I was nervous the whole time. I've been actually nervous all day because I knew the challenges that uh, were in this, this particular subject. So I'm mm -hmm. glad I at least got <laughs> material covering the whole surface. I'm fairly happy with the result. Yeah. Uh, I hope you enjoyed um, tonight's uh, Getting Sketchy. Remember, for those of you who are going to be joining us over at the Live Lessons, we'll see you in just a minute. And I'm going to get my acrylic paints ready to paint some blueberries. Uh, Ashley, have anything else to uh, add? Um, I don't think so. Norlene says save some energy for those blueberries, and I'm anxious to watch Matt slow it down now <laughs> because he's been moving at lightning speed, and it's time to change gears. Right. I don't know how much I'm going to slow down, though, because we've got to finish the blueberry painting by next week. That's uh, right. So we might, I... It might be another episode of Getting Sketchy in the next hour, <laughs> but with acrylic paint. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Again, thanks uh, for joining us. Remember... Uh, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, what are you doing? Uh, subscribe <laughs> to the channel and uh, click the notification bell. Also, three free course videos and eBooks. There's a link in the description below. Make sure that you check that out as well. And that'll get you on our newsletter list. So um, I send out newsletters, which have uh, all the new lessons that I've added to the site. So uh, everything's not here on YouTube, obviously. There's 
a lot of stuff that's added to the membership program too that uh, you don't see here on YouTube. So anyway, um, I, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. If you're not joining us over uh, at thevirtualinstructor.com and if you are joining us at thevirtualinstructor.com, I hope you have a wonderful week too. So uh, <laughs> uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and sign out. Uh, good night, everybody.